I'm Arnie Gunderson of Fairwinds Associates, and it's Friday, March 25th, 2011. I thought I'd talk to you today about the radiation that's being emitted from the uh, Fukushima plant. There's a lot of confusing terms out there, and I was hoping to clarify some of them. The, um, the, on the news, you're going to hear about the radiation levels over Tokyo were 1,600 times normal or that the radioactive concentration of iodine is five times what the legal limit is. And I wanted to talk about this. There's a couple different concepts in play here that are worth, um, that are worth bringing up. First off, when uranium splits, it makes daughter products. These are daughter products, and they split too. They'll decay away, and in the process of decaying, it's called disintegration, they can emit three different things. They can emit a gamma ray, they can emit a beta particle, or they can emit an alpha particle. So there's three different kinds of radio radioactive decay that results from disintegration of these radioactive daughter products. Radiation really means that energy is given up. When this particle decays away, it gives up energy. Well, where does that energy go? It gets absorbed by your body. And that causes, can cause some cellular damage and, and potentially cancer, especially in fast-growing cells of children. Well, the first kind of radiation that comes out of a nuclear power plant is gamma rays. And they're a high energy, like an x-ray, um, but even more powerful than an x-ray. And they're what's picked up on the decimeters that you can see different, uh, different um, news, news anchors using when they're out in the field. Um, I brought my Geiger counter with me, and, and I can show you a little bit about what gamma rays really are. And this is a Geiger counter. It's an oldie but a goodie. Um, and you'll see that the dial is reading about 600 disintegrations per minute here in, in Vermont. Now, that's not coming from Fukushima. That's coming from the sky, from solar radiation. It's coming from the ground, from radon gases, and, um, and other things. Now, those gamma rays are penetrating this metal shell, and inside here is a detector. Now, I brought my grandfather's old radium dialed watch and um, I'll put it up against the detector and you'll see the dial go up about uh, five, six, seven times normal background. That's because the radium in this watch is emitting gamma rays that penetrate that. This is why they don't make these watches anymore. People would fall asleep by their brain and it's not a good thing. Um, but that's an example of a gamma ray. Now, in the news, you'll be reading about over Tokyo, the radiation levels went up. And what that means is that a cloud of radioactive daughter products, usually xenon and krypton, will pass over, um, will pass over Tokyo, and they'll create gamma rays. And that's what's usually being picked up on these uh, personal decimeters. Now, there's two other kinds of um, particles that are, cannot penetrate my detector. And those are beta particles and alpha particles. They get into your body by breathing or by, uh, by taste or through a cut in the skin. And they're what, when these guys are all bundled up in their suits, that's what they're being protected from, from beta particles and, and alpha particles. Now, the... Um, um, these particles cause cellular damage only when they're inside you. Iodine, for instance, is selectively absorbed by your thyroid and causes damage directly to the thyroid. If iodine is outside you, it won't really cause radiation damage. The same with cesium. Cesium is exactly like, um, is absorbed by muscle and uh, it causes damage, especially to heart muscles in, in, in infants, but it causes muscle uh, tumors. And strontium is another beta emitter, and it goes to your bone and can cause leukemia. Again, it's got through your skin and it's right up against 
the, um, the marrow of your bone, which can cause a leukemia. And the last kind of radiation is an alpha particle. An alpha particle is the biggest and most massive of them all. And it usually comes from depleted uranium or from plutonium. And it's like a howitzer. It's really, really a powerful particle once it gets in your body. If you breathe in these alpha particles, if you breathe in the plutonium, when it decays away, it produces a cancer in your lung. And, uh, uh, and it's very, very damaging. Three more things before we go today is how radiation is measured. Well, they measure it in something called Becquerel's, and that's a disintegration per second. One disintegration per second is a Becquerel. So I'd prefer to call it disintegrations per second. Now you'll see field measurements as far away from Fukushima as uh, uh, 30 or 40 miles where a piece of paper laid on the field that's a, a meter by a meter, three feet by three feet, will pick up 900,000 disintegrations per second of beta particles or um, of beta emitting particles or of alpha emitting particles or gamma emitting particles. Now, they don't know what that particle is, but they know that the, 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 uh, the, the piece of paper has that much on it. That's a lot. Um, you'll also, so a Becquerel, when you see that, is a disintegration every second. The other, the other term is a sievert. You'll see one millisievert. Well, that's another, that's an indication of cellular damage, but the term that, that I'm used to is a millirem. One millisievert is a hundred millirem. And so basically it's just a hundred times bigger than a, than a millirem. It's a measure of personal exposure. And the last term is half-life. What does that mean? Iodine has a half-life of eight days. That means in eight days, half of it's gone. In 16 days, only a quarter of it is left. In 24 days, an eighth is left. So every eight days, whatever's there, a half disappears. Cesium, on the other hand, has got a 30-year half-life. So you gotta wait 30 years for half of it to be gone, 60 years for only a quarter of it to be left, and 90 years for it to be an eighth left. The general rule of thumb is 10 half-lives and it's all gone. So for iodine, in the next 80 days, it will all be gone. But the cesium and the strontium will hang around for 300 years. The worst one of all is plutonium. And if it's released from the fuel, there hasn't been any detected yet. But if it's released from the fuel, it has a half-life of 24,000 years. And so therefore, it will hang around in the environment for a quarter of a million years. Well. That's it for today, and as I see more uh, information on the web, I will try to post it. Thank you.